On this episode of Lineman Talk, we're going to try to answer a question that we've got about oil circuit reclosing. How does ambient temperature affect oil circuit reclosing? We call them OCRs, we call them circuit breakers, we call them lots of things. But here we have two identical, brand new H type with the same curve, 2A, 2B. These will have a 100 amp trip coil, we'll call it 50 amp continuous. Now we have a Miller Falter here that will probably be somewhere between 300 and 350 amps delivered to the common bus. And because we're in parallel, we'll watch each breaker act independently. I'll have this fluke recording the current, so we'll be able to see how much pass through it. But this is typical of the uh, recloser we would have at the end of the line where small am smaller amounts of fault current are available to us. So we're logging. We're gonna be using this Miller Falter and it's gonna produce AC voltage. So we're gonna put on our rubber gloves. And we're gonna take these two reclosers to lockout. Filter off. The fluke shows that we pushed almost 450 amps through that recloser. Part of what I want to do today is we're going to set up another demo as part of this one. We're going to take one of the reclosers and we're going to drop it in a bucket of ice. And then this recloser, we're gonna take a tank heater and elevate the oil temperature as high as we can get it. So we can create a dramatic temperature delta between the two reclosers. So one will be as cold and the other one will be hot. And in Central Texas, we have these drastic temperature changes where wintertime will be in the 20s and summertime will be at 105 degrees. And what we're hoping to do is that we'll see how the ambient temperature changes affect oil circuit reclosers. Welcome back to part two. In this part, what you can see is that we took this recloser, we put it in a bucket of ice, probably been three hours. This bucket, this recloser, we've wrapped with a tank heater. He's been dumping somewhere between 120 and 150 degree Fahrenheit for the last three hours. This one's been in ice for the last three hours. And when I shoot it with thermal imaging, we see this one settled down for what we can tell at about 60 degree Fahrenheit. This one's near 140, 150 Fahrenheit. So I expect to see a delta, temperature delta of 80 to 90 degree Fahrenheit. This oil should be thinner than that oil only by temperature. So now with both reclosers in the closed position, nobody's operated for hours, we're going to bring the Miller Falter on, take these two to, to lock out. We'll see, this one was tripping out earlier, uh, tripping out faster earlier, and they're not a digital. So there's no reason for us to expect that in this test setup, that we're gonna dump the exactly the same amount of fault currents and work with exactly the same amount of currents and the parts that are in these little H's. So let me put my gloves, set the logger on.
both went to lockout. About the same amount of current, and when I talk about the current through this peak, that's going to be actually a peak when that transformer comes energized in the falter. So I would expect that it probably falls off. So we see 450 on a falter that on the gauge says it's only supposed to go to 250. Now, we're going to add something here. I don't know that we can really see how the temperature delta affected the operation of the reclosing on the amount of fault current that we put in it. We like to think that the greater the fault current, the faster the reclose is gonna operate. And if you were to start counting seconds, you can see that we went through all four operations just a little bit faster than you can count them. One, two, three, four, and you're done. So whatever was on the line that these reclosers cleared, they may still be there. It's not like a digital where we've got reclose, open reclose times uh, 1, 3, 5, or uh, 1, 5, 15. These reclosers are coming open and making that line go dead in just a few seconds. So what we're going to do now is we're going to see if we can get these closed. They're pumped up from operating four times. Now we'll see if could we close them back. The falter is open, off, and we're just going to see if we can get the yellow handle back up. That one clicked, and that one stayed. Okay, now I'm going to turn the amps down to a much lower number. All right, it wasn't planned to have a part three, but the compressor came on, so we stopped. Now we're gonna go back, and we're going to take these two reclosers and push smaller amounts of fault current through. Both of these are 50 H's, we call them 50's. They have 100 amp trip coils. So we're gonna turn the welder down, the falter, the Miller falter. We're gonna turn it down from its maximum. We're gonna find somewhere where we're taking a wild guess. And we're gonna to try to be just above 100. I'm hoping that what you'll be able to see is the reclose times will change by the reduced fault currents. Set up the logger so we'll know what we don't. logger says about 110 so we're going to raise it a little bit more so he was able to dump past that current through you never saw an operation so the oil temperature didn't appear to have an effect the trip coil is sized for the current we're flowing through it so it did never operated a handle we might have left it on for another 60 seconds and seen something but we're going to raise the current just a little bit If that was 110, this should be about 135. Got close to 150, about 135, but still not enough to cause that recloser to trip. So we'll raise it a little bit more. So it's be about 150 amps on peak. 
We haven't forced the recloser to operate yet. One more time. Not enough. Now this whole time, this coil, transformer coil, is feeding that current. So the transformer coil is entered, uh, has warmed up, cables are warmed up, recloses are warmed up, so it's probably not a great example. Probably about 180 amps in the short term. We're pretty close to max on the Miller. Both of them locked out. Now, if we had a digital amp provider, a digital fault maker, we could have more control. But I think what I heard is that on the B curve, the B curve actually extended and stayed in longer. Smaller current, takes a little bit more to get it to operate, but it still went through all four operations quickly. That's all I've got.